You might have a will, but do you have a checklist for your entire estate plan? Well, here to talk with me about that is Allison Lee. She's Associate General Counsel at Free Will. Allison, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to have you here. It'll be great to have you walk us through the article you just wrote for Retirement Daily about a checklist for your estate plan. Uh, first of all, let's start here. Why does someone need a checklist for such a for an estate plan? So it's widely understood estate planning consists of passing on wealth for one generation to another. And while that's certainly an important component, um, there are several critically important aspects that are often overlooked. Yeah. So one of those being what, health care wishes? Absolutely. A prominent example, in fact, includes ensuring that your health care decisions are carried out in accordance with your wishes. Right. And what kind of documents might someone need if they are looking to add this to their checklist? That's a great question. So you've got your will, oftentimes a revocable living trust, and then two of the documents that I speak about in the article are health care powers of attorney and financial power of attorney. And, and just briefly, what do those documents do? Why does someone need them? Sure. They're, they're multiple, first of all, there are multiple documents that encompass your health care plan. There's the health care power of attorney. It's a legal document that allows you to express your wishes for your medical decisions, including who should manage those matters. And then a health care power of attorney often goes alongside a living will, which expresses your treatment preferences. And that can include whether you want to receive life-sustaining treatment or be an organ donor. Um, you may choose to align these types of choices with your values or religious spiritual beliefs. And with the healthcare proxy, um, one of the things that needs to happen in, in order for it to spring into effect is that you've been deemed incapacitated? Sure. Well, that's uh, for the healthcare power of attorney, yes. That is, um, in, in the large cases, that is effective. That's effective immediately for the help for the financial power of attorney. As you said, um, there's the option of making it springing, which means that it can be made to take effect upon your disability. Um, so another big topic with estate plans, many folks have digital assets today. Uh, what do we need to know about that? Sure. Um, the average person is likely to have about 100 digital accounts, which is really amazing. And this makes it incredibly important to plan for them upon your passing, um, especially to give your family peace of mind. And by creating an estate plan, you can express clear instructions on what you'd like to happen for all these accounts and who should be involved. One of the things you can do is name a digital executor to manage your digital assets according to your will. That person often has some expertise in this area and can carry out the role while working hand in hand with the main executor. And with respect to digital assets and, and whatnot, some entities have terms of service that may or may not preclude people from accessing one's account. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's true. Oftentimes the terms of service can make it challenging. Yeah. So how does someone get around those kind of uh, hurdles? Well, it's not always easy. Um, sometimes it's just reading those terms of service closely to make sure you know what you can do and what you can't do. Um, other times it just becomes a challenge and you have to work with the, with the service provider and figure out a way when, when the uh, testator passes. Mm. So I remember when uh, my children were young, below age 18, we had to name a guardian uh, for them, which was a difficult decision. Tell us more about what folks need to know about that. Oh yeah, again, you may not consider yourself wealthy, but if you have minor children or children on the way, you have an important reason to create or update your estate plan. Um, parents can designate a trusted guardian for kids in their estate plan. Um, and the guardian has a lot of responsibilities. The guardian is responsible for welcoming the child into their home, ensuring that the healthcare and education the child receives is of quality and best fits their needs. You outline these wishes in your plans including giving consideration for unexpected circumstances. So again, you know, it's not about wealth, but it certainly is about the children. Yeah, I remember when we were going through this, my wife and I, we had to make sure that we had enough life insurance should we both uh, die at the same time that would cover the expense of, of our guardian uh, raising the children and making sure that they, maybe those funds were adequate enough for them to build an addition to a house to accommodate having extra children in their home. Yeah, it's a really good point. And another important reason to have an estate plan is to take care of life insurance needs. That's that's a great point. Yeah. So speaking of naming guardians and estate plans for children, oftentimes parents and others have pets that need to be cared for. 
Oh yeah, there's pets. We love pets and under the law, pets are property and it's important to have a plan for them. Every animal is unique, has its own needs, wants, and personalities. So there are a couple of options for taking care of a pet. Um, one is just designating a trusted individual or organization to carry out your wishes for your pet's well-being. You know, you describe all the qualities that make them unique, making sure that they have what they need to thrive. Um, if you desire, you can also establish a pet trust, a little more complicated, but you, but also a great way to take care of your pets after you pass. You appoint a competent trustee to distribute funds on behalf of your furry family member for the items that enrich their life, including nutritious food, fun toys, medical visits to help keep them happy and healthy. Hmm. So I find one area of estate planning that almost always causes problems within families is what to do with tangible personal property. That's a great point. That's often quite a struggle, but um, if you plan for it in your will, you can reduce the likelihood that there's going to be um, there's going to be complications. So, you know, maybe it's maybe it's the journal that your aunt shared with you that you take life lessons from. Maybe it's the album you created of your oldest child throughout their time in grade school, who now has kids of their own. These tangible items may not hold a lot of monetary value, but they're close to your heart. Having a plan ensures these treasures are protected and can help the next generation of your family build roots and stay connected to their elders. Yeah. And do you, do you recommend that um, folks who are go, building their estate plan and just deciding what to do with their tangible personal property talk to their loved ones about what their intent is for a wedding ring, an engagement ring, or a, whatever it might be? Absolutely. Having those conversations in advance is a great idea. Um, it really sets the stage for what will happen. And, you know, you can get a lot of feedback from from your loved ones as to what they may or may not want. And that can also help inform your decision making. What about uh, financial wishes? So we've talked about tangible, personal, personal property, children, financial wishes. Yeah, we talked briefly at the beginning about powers of attorney, and this is the financial power of attorney. If you become incapacitated and have to navigate serious medical conditions, um, if you don't have enough funds to pay for those expenses, it could be necessary to sell your home or other personal property. That's where your financial agent comes in. Um, a financial power of attorney allows you to designate an agent to make those financial decisions for you and outline specific financial decisions you wish to assign your agent. Um, you know, if you become unable to take care of your finances and have no plan in place, um, the government comes in and makes those choices according to applicable law, it's, as opposed to considering your preferences and values. So um, your estate plan really is a powerful component in ensuring financial security for yourself and your family. Yeah. So Allison, we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? Well, I think that was that was a lot of ground that we covered very quickly. Um, and I think we just go back to the main, you know, the main point, um, which is that, you know, although many Americans self-select out of doing their estate plan, this is because of a misplaced belief that they don't have enough assets to make writing a will worthwhile. Um, this problem actually appears most frequently in minority communities for whom intergenerational accumulation of wealth could make a significant difference. But while planning for wealth is certainly a major component, I just want to emphasize that there are several other critically important aspects of estate planning that are overlooked. And those are those which we spoke of today. Yeah. Allison, uh, I, for one, am so grateful for you for sharing this knowledge and, and, uh, and wisdom with our readers and viewers. So thank you very much. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. Always glad to be here.